And welcome back, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us. Kelly Roman's our guest. She's been a park ranger at Fort Stanwix National Monument since 2001, and Fort Stanwix is what we're talking about. One of the things that uh, I seem to be hearing and seeing more about lately than I can remember in recent years, Kelly, is Fort Bull. There's, uh, there's been, uh, that's owned by a private organization, is it? Or? Fort Bull is owned by the Rome Historical Society, um, who on occasion partners with a Fort Bull research group area. Um, the property surrounding it is owned by a different organization. Okay. And Fort, what, what role did Fort Bull play with Fort Stanwix? Fort, Stan or Fort Bull was one of Fort Stanwix's predecessors. So Fort Bull or Fort Wood Creek, whatever you'd like to call it, it just depends on the time period, was the far western uh, guard of the Oneida Carry. So that was the furthest fort for a short time. And it helped to guard Wood Creek. Now in 1754, um, excuse me, 1756, just after it was completed, the French invaded through New York, but they snuck down through the Adirondacks and then down through basically the Mohawk Palisade area and around. So people watching Wood Creek wouldn't know they were coming and they were able to destroy that fort and continue their raids through the Mohawk Valley to take out British supply stores. And it was rebuilt by a, a fort called Fort Wood Creek. However, later in that year, the French began to attack Fort Ontario or Oswego, which is exactly where you think it is. It's in Oswego, New York. Um, when that fort fell to the French, Commander Webb, who was in charge of this area, he kind of panicked and destroyed all the British forces so he could pull their resources further to the east. They were truly afraid that when Oswego fell that the French were going to take the valley and the rest of New York. So his idea was to consolidate and hopefully save some face. So it was one of the predecessors to Fort Stanwix. And the United Carry, which you mentioned, that was a, a significant uh, strategic spot yes. in our area. Yes, uh, you have to imagine there's no boats, well, large boats, like canal boats. There's no canals, there's no railroads, there's no cars, there's no planes. So you're going to have to get around or through the tremendous obstacles that North America presents you geologically, the forests, the trees, um, the mountains and the lakes and the valleys. And usually the easiest way to do that is to try to take advantage of one of those features. So to the south of us, it's the Cumberland Gap. You can hike up and over the Appalachians. Up here, it's the Mohawk River. So if you're traversing through the Adirondacks and the Appalachians via the Mohawk and the Hudson Rivers, well, eventually you're either gonna end up in New York City or up here where Rome sits today, um, but you have to continue westward and there's a dry spot between there and the Oswego River watershed, which is Wood Creek, Oneida Lake, the Oswego River, that all run into Lake Ontario. If you can protect that, you can protect your border, you can protect who's going back and forth and keep an eye on those things. It was a very, very strategic location. During the American Revolutionary War, it was the border of the original 13 colonies. Mm -hmm. It was as far as you could go in our nation. Um, and the land surrounding it was eventually developed in what became the Erie Canal because you have this wonderful patch of land that is so easy to traverse, why not improve it? And of course, the other fort, uh to mention is Fort Schuyler uh, in Utica, yes. which was uh, at one time named, uh, there was a confusion of names because we had Fort Schuyler in Utica, we had Fort Schuyler in Rome, yeah. yeah? So this entire time I've been calling it Fort Stanwix. It should be called Fort Schuyler, or Fort Stanwix, formerly known as Fort Schuyler. Um, you don't name a fort after your enemy. It was Fort Stanwix during the French and Indian War when it was under British control, but we were all under British control then, so we were all British. By the time the Revolutionary War rolls around and Britain is now our enemy, uh, they name it after uh, Philip Schuyler, who was in command of the area under George Washington, the commander of the Northern Department. And by the time that war is done, Fort Schuyler that was in Utica, which was named for one of Philip Schuyler's ancestors, it wasn't being occupied because it wasn't that far out and the militia was further to the east. Um, and there's also a Fort Schuyler in the New York City area and a couple of very old remains of other Fort Schuylers mm -hmm. in the Albany area. So as the Revolutionary War begins to wrap up and soldiers begin uh, recording things for their pensions and being interviewed for them, 
to save confusion, it became Fort Stanwix, formerly known as Schuyler. Even in some of the contemporary notes from the Revolution, it's Fort Stanwix, formerly known as Schuyler, or Fort Schuyler, formerly known as Stanwix. <laughs> um, so probably in some weird military record somewhere, we are still Fort Schuyler, but yeah. because it colloquially became known as Fort Stanwix, we kept the name modern day. Yeah. Um, you got a holiday open house coming, yes? Yes, sir. So it's our last event of the year and it's my favorite event. I'm actually, for any of my volunteers watching, the note is coming shortly. And it will take place on t November 30th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. Uh, you just walk into the fort, it's free of charge. Everything will be candlelit. There'll be fireplaces going. There'll be people singing carols of the day. And a lot of people have asked me in recent times, why is it the holiday open house, not the Christmas open house? Well, it's because back then, there was a plethora of crazy and interesting holidays that were attached to all the various cultures, the Scotch, the Dutch, the English, the Germans, the natives, all in this area um, that people don't celebrate today. So one of my favorites, just because it's so different, is called Hogmany, which is kind of Christmas and New Year's all balled into one. And in order to celebrate, you have to take an elk hide, preferably, walk around your town with a bunch of your friends, screaming to chase out the bad spirits and beating that elk hide <laughs> to chase them away. Uh, it's going to be the <laughs> Holiday Open House on November 30th, right? November 30th, 6.30 to 8.30, Good. free of charge. Good to see you again, Kelly. Pleasure to see you too, Joe. That's going to do it for us this week. We'll be back next week. We'll do it all again. Don't forget CNYHomePage.com. Lots of good stuff there. Until next time, take care of yourself, everybody. <laughs>